In the video series of grounding and bonding for solar inverters, we discuss a number of times about the fact that you can only have one bond in your whole system. Sometimes that's going to be in your inverter. Sometimes it's going to be in a breaker panel. But you need to know if your inverter is bonded or not. How do you test to see if your inverter is bonded? In the grounding and bonding for solar inverters part two video, I covered three different methods for testing your inverters. The second one is measure voltages. And in the video that you're currently watching, we're going to expand on some new information of how to measure voltages, especially related to ghost voltages. Okay, so on the left is my uh, grow watt inverter. And the AC out of that is feeding this breaker panel. And I'm going to take the front cover off of this so we can see the uh, bus bars inside. Okay, so here's where we connect the hot or line one from the grow watt. This would be line two if you wanted to use it. I'm not using it in this breaker. This is our neutral, and this is our ground bus bar. My grow watt inverter is not bonded. This system is bonded by my house's main panel, which isn't shown in this video. These cables connect to the neutral and ground of that panel to provide the bond. The voltage readings, however, will be the same as if my inverter was providing the bond. Later in the video, to show the unbonded voltages, I will disconnect these cables. Okay, let's get started. Let's say your inverter has a bonded neutral. We're going to take some measurements across the line, neutral, and ground. We can take those right from the inverter terminals. You have a ground, a line, and a neutral. In my case, we're going to read these voltages off of the breaker panel that I just showed you a minute ago. Okay, so between the hot and the neutral, we are seeing about 119.9 or basically 120 volts between line one and neutral. Okay, between the hot and the ground, we are also seeing about 120 volts. That's because the ground is bonded to the neutral and allows the return path for the voltage. And we're checking the neutral to the ground, and we're seeing 0.019. It's a very, very tiny amount of voltage. So between the neutral and the ground, you're going to typically see less than one volt. This is also the same uh, voltages you should get off of normal North American AC grid house wiring. So first we see that we have the hot to neutral at 120, the hot to ground at 120, and from neutral to ground, you should see anywhere from zero to five volts, even though typically it's less than one volt. Let's look at the voltages that we would find on an inverter that is not bonded. So from line one to neutral, that's 120 volts because that is our active circuit. So hot and neutral, 119.6 to 0.8. Okay, so measuring from hot to ground, well, since there is no bond anymore, there's no return path right now. So you would think this should actually read zero volts. But when you go in and actually measure it, you can see anywhere from 40 to 60 volts. Between hot and ground, we're reading 46 volts. In between neutral and ground, we also see somewhere between 40 and 60 volts. Between neutral and ground, we have 59.7 volts. Okay, so on the unbonded inverter, we see 120 volts on our hot to neutral, exactly the same as the bondage system. The hot to neutral is, of course, where our actual circuit is that carries the load. Now, the other two, the hot to ground and the neutral to ground, are both showing anywhere from, say, 40 to 60 volts. There are two potential causes for these hot to ground and neutral to ground voltages. The first is sometimes referred to as ghost voltages. 
which show up on your meter, but they will disappear once you bond the system. The second is real voltage, which is dangerous and can kill you. Obviously, it's important to know the difference. So let's take a closer look at ghost voltages. These are found in unbonded inverters, generators, and power supplies. It's caused by leakages, basically, in the capacitance and the induction of the circuits. There is voltage, but there is no current, or virtually no current. And like a ghost, they disappear. In this case, they disappear when you bond the ground in the neutral. The key thing to remember is that there is voltage, but no current. So let's see how we can test for these ghost voltages. One of the ways you can do it is with a low impedance multimeter, sometimes called a dual impedance multimeter. And these will have a setting on them called low Z, which is low impedance. On the low impedance setting, you won't read these ghost voltages. Instead, you will see zero volts between uh, neutral and ground and hot and ground. If you don't have a low impedance multimeter, you can use a light bulb to check for ghost voltages. It needs to be an incandescent bulb, which are getting harder to find, but you can still find appliance bulbs like this. Put it in a porcelain socket and wire it up between the neutral and the ground. If it lights up, you have real voltage and real current going through. If it doesn't light up, you have ghost voltage. I'm going to my hot and my neutral and the light bulb's lighting up like it should. Cross neutral and ground, the light bulb will not light up. So two ways we can see if we have ghost voltages. If you have ghost voltages, a low impedance multimeter will read zero from neutral to ground. If you insert a light bulb across neutral to ground, it will not light up. But what if the light bulb lights up or you put a low impedance multimeter across neutral and ground and it shows voltage. Well, then you have real voltages, which are dangerous. Um, this can be caused by low voltage DC bus inverters. Now, what does that mean? Well, this is the way some standalone inverters and power stations are wired. They give you two legs of 60 volts across hot and neutral. Okay, so on these cheap inverters, especially uh, the ones that have the AC sockets on the front, you're going to have not 120 volts coming out of the line. You have 60 volts coming out of the line. The neutral is not the return for the line. It acts more like a line two that's 180 degrees out of phase from line one. If you measure across line and neutral, it's 120 volts. It will run your circuits. You plug things in and you won't realize anything is different about this. If you measure from line to ground, it's 60 volts. And this is not a ghost voltage like it was on our unbonded inverter. This is actual voltage, 60 volts going to ground carrying current. And here is across neutral and ground, you're also going to measure 60 volts. So if you were to bond this neutral and ground, you are now putting 60 volts of real voltage across your ground cable, which means all of your cases are now live. There's also a very good chance you will burn up or fry this cheap inverter. Let's say we have an inverter and we don't know whether it's bonded or unbonded. We can check the voltages and see how they come out. If they look like this, then the inverter is bonded, which means we could use it with its own breaker panel in an off-grid use, not tying it into the existing grid circuitry. If you wanted to tie it into existing house wiring, you would have to use a transfer switch that also switched the neutral. And we'll come back to that in another video. If you use a low impedance multimeter and you get zero and zero across the hot to ground and neutral to ground, that means this is unbonded. So we could add the bond to a separate sub panel if we were using it, or if we wanted to tie into existing house wiring, we could potentially do this using a transfer switch. If we're using a normal meter, not a low impedance meter, and we get 40 to 60 volts on our hot to ground and neutral to ground, then we need to verify whether we have ghost voltage or real voltage. 
And we do that by using our light bulb method. We connect an incandescent light bulb across neutral and ground. If the light bulb lights up, you have real voltage. So this inverter cannot be bonded and cannot be connected to existing grid AC. If the light bulb doesn't light up, you have ghost voltage. So that means it is safe to bond this inverter and use it with existing household wiring. We also talked about rule number one, which is there can only be one neutral ground bond in your entire electrical system. That wraps it up for this video. See you in the next one. Ha 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 ha